Guys, thanks for listening to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I also want to thank the following sponsors for their support of this podcast. Without them, it, this podcast would not be possible. I want to thank the Go Hunt Insider, uh, Lorenzo Sartini and his crew over at Go Hunt. They have created the Insider, which is an amazing tool for you guys that are researching all these different western states and looking for which units to apply for and put in for. Uh, they also have the Go Hunt maps, the Go Hunt gear shop. Uh, right now, go to GoHunt.com, click sign up for the Insider. Uh, use the J. Scott promo code. You're going to get a $50 Go Hunt gear shop gift card just for signing up. Go Hunt's been with me since the beginning of 2015 at, when I started this podcast. They've been a very loyal title sponsor of this podcast. And I want to thank them for their support. Make sure to go and sign up for the Go Hunt Insider. Use the J. Scott promo code. Guys, I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's K U I U dot com. Kuyu Ultralight Hunting is a direct to consumer uh, brand that sells the best ultralight hunting equipment and gear on the market today. Uh, you can go to K U I U dot com, Kuyu dot com, and order directly there on their website. I also want to thank Phonescope.com, Cheston, the guys over at Phonescope. Go to Phonescope.com. Anything you order there, use the J. Scott 23 promo code, and you're going to get a 10% discount there at Phonescope. I also want to thank Lathrop & Sons, their custom boot system and custom footbed manufacturer. Uh, these guys are the boot doctors, the boot gurus. Um, they're very, very helpful. They know a lot about boots. Uh, I have switched this season to the Lathrop & Sons Encompass boot. Uh, that's what I've worn primarily on my coos deer and mule deer hunts in Mexico. And then I use the Mountain Hunter uh, for my sheep hunts, uh, specifically desert sheep. Uh, in any of that uh, more technical terrain, uh, Lathrop & Sons has a phenomenal 3D mapping imprints and, and tracing kit. Uh, they make custom orthotics, uh, just really, really comfortable, uh, very user-friendly boots and custom insoles. Uh, go to lathropandsons.com. To find out more information, you can also check out Lathrop & Sons on Instagram. They have three custom boot options, the Mountain Hunter, the Mountain Hunter Elite, and the Mountain Hunter Encompass, as well as the High Country Synergy Footbeds Custom. Uh, they also make all of these custom footbeds in wide and super wide, as well as the boots, which is rare for a boot manufacturer. Reach out to the owners, Stephen and James at Lathrop & Sons at 618-544-544. 8782. That's lathropandsons.com. Guys, I want to thank you for supporting this podcast. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, any questions you might have, you can reach out at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. That's my email address. You can follow along on Instagram at jscottoutdoors. Always feel free to send me a direct message. Love hearing from you guys. And let's get right to these episodes. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we're going to have some fun with some friends of mine, Stephen and James Lathrop out of Illinois with Lathrop and Sons Boot Company. Guys, how you doing? Doing real well today. Thanks for having us on. We're doing great. That's awesome. I'm excited to have you guys on this podcast. Uh, I want to talk feet. I want to talk boots. I want to talk Lathrop and Sons and what you guys do and, and on a daily basis. Um, before we get to that, I kind of want to get an introductory here about you guys, uh, and I'll let you guys do that, but uh, you guys are brothers, and you guys own Lathrop & Sons Boot Company, and yeah. how, how did that come into existence? So, Jay, this is it's really unique. Our, our father is a podiatrist, and he's re recently retired, and both James and I have gosh, 28, 25 years of experience working in that medical uh, podiatry clinic. And he had several clinics. 
So we helped with assisting him with patient care, assisting surgeries. Um, but where we really shined was making orthotics for the foot and ankle, building custom shoes, build up. So diving into the whole manufacturing a boot, manufacturing a footbed for mountain hunters, it was it was really it was meant to be because James and I were constantly, I'm going to say, it, geeking out over different materials that we use for patients, right? Um, you'd put on a pair of Banner boots or Cabela's Mindle boots, and look, we got to make these feel better. What can we do? Take them down to the lab. Let's do this. And we'd be sitting down there like little mad scientists taking this material and fitting them in there. And... It wasn't too long after that we had buddies. We were we young guys, you know, being able to go out west and hunt. And we wanted to make our boots better. And our buddies would come down to the lab. It was kind of that hangout, right? And it just started evolving from there. It was it was a really it's an incredible um, platform to really launch the LNS boot brand, Jay. So, I mean, it, it basically came down to people knowing that you guys knew a lot about feet and people's um, different problems and issues. And so it just kind of morphed into, hey, we're going to start making, you know, custom footbeds. We're going to start making boots. Is I mean, it just hit you one day that, hey, we need to do this. Yeah, I think it kind of did. I mean, at the end of the day... Kind of following a dream, neither one of us are podiatrists. We were podorthists. Those were the guys that fit orthopedic shoes and make orthotics. And the medical training of had and our family practice really did help us um, understand a lot more about uh, how to fit these European styles of boots. And as you know, there's a lot of of uh, issues that people can have from time to time and they don't understand exactly why that is. So yeah, I mean, we wanted to go ahead and, and do something uh, beyond what we currently were doing. And, you know, we took a chance, went to a, a show up in Kalamazoo and uh, kind of funny, we made enough money just for the trip, uh, but it was a stepping stone for us. And you know what? It's, once we got better and better at, at uh, understanding it and, and uh, realizing that there was a, a serious need uh, for this type of service, then and that's how Lathrop and Sons was we, ba we, we baby stepped it, right? We, we did a little bit. We made some crude molds. I mean, I would call them crude comparatively to what we're doing now because now we're using programs and we're milling out all these aluminum molds and coming up with molds that can be connected and taken apart and and um <clears throat> but it's all gross right it's like learning the process and evolving the process to help somebody and when you throw into it that james and i've been bow hunting since we were 14 and 15 years old i mean that's your passion how awesome is it to be able to tie in to something you're really passionate about, helping people and those people that need your help or bow hunters or hunters. I don't know that it can get any better than that, really. Yeah, for sure. I know that when I was um, working with you, uh, Stephen, to get my uh, boots all dialed in and get, get my footbeds dialed in, um, it was right during, uh, kind of right during November and, and the whitetail season and both you and James um, were spending time, you know, sometimes all day, but morning and night, uh, you know, taking turns, hitting stands. Some of you, you know, you'd be working, James would be sitting, you know, James would be working, you'd be sitting, um, and y you guys are diehard whitetail hunters. Um, one question I have, so when you guys started this company, you um, you guys, why are the boots all made in Europe? Why, what is it about European boots and why are most of the boot manufacturers in Europe and why did that then make you guys say, you know what, we want to be able to partner with the European company and have them produce what we want? How, how did that all kind of take shape? 
Well, to be honest with you, that's where you find the the quality materials and the craftsmanship for that kind of footwear. Um, is it just James? I, is it just because they have giant mountains there and they're that that no, it's, they've it's, been into mountaineering and been in you know they're kind of the leaders in that. Yeah, I, they are the leaders in it. They, that they, they they are the, the the leaders in it, but it's almost like. If you go to Italy and taste their food over there, for some reason, it's just like pure. It's right. awesome. And that's kind of what you get out of those areas. It's old school construction. It, it, it is. And a lot of the people that you deal with, Jay, when this, this whole thing came about, James and I spent hours and hours on the phone talking to manufacturers here in the United States. A lot of people don't yeah, know we that. We, we exhausted We that. tried to go ahead and have our boots built. We exhausted States. it. We thought, you know what, USA, made in the USA, I mean, that's something that really kind of stands out. But it, it just was wasn't it available. available. It, 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 so we spent all this time on the phone trying to get these, and, and I'm not going to kid you, you know, it was like it was a sales pitch, right. you know, talking guys to get somebody to really have interest in this whole concept of not mass producing something but truly building something that was not a private label that was not a mass produced boot with somebody's name on it but it was a product that was made at a much lower quantity any major high-end quality and we, we just we couldn't we really could not get it done we even toured with the idea of doing some stuff and bringing people into the u.s to do it for us and we just couldn't make it happen you know I, the pipe dreams maybe but we tried it um and now we have a designer that works with james and i he's very prestigious uh designer and we have a really awesome guy that helps us with new designs and integrating different features and um, we've got a family who we dearly care a lot about and they care about us and they do one-offs for us and they're just the perfect fit for us so we're, we're very fortunate but it's been a lot of hard work yeah i'll bet it has when it come when it came to design when you guys looked at each other and said we want to fill a niche here. We want to fill a void um, that we f feel and we see is necessary. Um, did it literally start from the ground up with the designer and you guys saying, okay, we need X, Y, and Z, and this is how we need it to be done? I mean, did you basically yeah. start from scratch and talk a little yeah. bit about that process? Yeah, that's exactly what it boiled down to. I mean, um we'll get the, i'm sure we'll get into this a little later on but you know laser and sons has always stayed um you know solid to uh, what we do there isn't a boot on the market that works with every foot out there and so we had had experience working with a lot of these european brands and i think we both realized that there was there were some pieces that were missing in some of these boots that we used that well make a list of those things to develop the um, the package all together. Like, what level of heel height? Believe it or not, there is a level of heel height that's necessary to be able to get off the front of the boot and or to help other biomechanical problems. What kind of a shank? Do you want just a solid shank? Do you want something that's more dynamic in nature that's got a little bit more of a flex point, a little more toe spring? These are ideas that we had that we wanted to put together in a separate unit to really be able to fill the gap and to help some of those other issues that we wanted to make our lives easier to help people. That's what we that's what our whole existence had been like before is helping people with foot problems. And so the boots were built from the ground up. We would say this is what we want. No, that's not quite right. We want more of this. Um, 
the, the layout and all that, they had to help with that doing the computer work. But we, took, we said what we wanted, and they incorporated it together for us. And well, and how I'll, hard was that at the beginning when I'm sure some of the first phases was, came? I mean, you, you probably wanted to throw them through the window. With, it was a lot of work because difficult. you can sit there. I mean, J James is, is trying to convey exactly what it is, but it's like when you go in and you apply a rigid cast to somebody's foot, everyone that knows someone or has had a cast on there is a sleeve with padding on that if you don't get the padding right then the cast rubs the sore it's called accommodative padding. And, it, and it's accommodative padding and these are the things that have to be integrated behind the scenes behind the orange abs on a piece of leather behind the booty that no one sees that when you put the foot on guys like yourself jay Guys like a lot of the guys that are running our boots that are serious mountain hunters, Justin Schaefer, Pedro, some of these guys, it works. And it works because there's guys like us behind the scenes that are making it happen. It is not just what's on the outside. And that is what James and I work with the just, just designer to integrate into that. And... Then you had the whole idea with the injection molding of the midsole. So, you know, it was a bit overwhelming. I mean, there was over two years of developing and designs to get this stuff going right. How patient did you have to be? Because, uh, you know, I know both of you and, and I know the, you know, you guys have a level of perfectionism that you, you know, you want it to be perfect. How hard was it to remain patient? knowing to keep your eye on the prize and know that you were going to create, but I'm sure there were times when you both just wanted to headbutt each other because you were so oh, frustrated. Okay. One step forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, one step. <laughs> we, a constant we banging of your head against the wall. Try. We are constantly, even today, <laughs> seriously. But that's and part of the challenge of doing what you do is to constantly be pushing to be better, right? We do. We try to refine it and make it even more achievable and that fit achievable and the biomechanics oh, yeah. and the performance out of the boot and the yeah. faster drying time. And I mean, yeah, we're doing well, that. It. That first generation boot is not the, the type of boot that we're selling today. It's changed. We constantly are, are, are aspiring to do the best and put out the best product, changing how we do some modifications to the boots, coming up with new ideas to make things more efficient for ourselves and, and to help people really looking at you know what is like in a in a custom package with a person somebody's dealing with cold feet looking at their you know their skin is there anything else there that needs to be taken care of not just the 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 fit of the boot i mean it's a package deal we're tr constantly trying to achieve the the best product and fit let's talk bit. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, you, when you first came into business, the first boot that you brought on the market, now you guys basically have the Elite, the Mountain Hunter, and the Encompass. Um, talk about at the beginning when you first came out with your boot and how that, that first generation boot has now morphed into uh, three different styles, if you will, that kind of fit a, a need for each type of mountain hunt. You have you know, the most extreme, the, a little more moderate, and then a little bit more widespread that's kind of a do-it-all do it all boot. So, so basically the range, we've actually just um, have come out with a fourth, which is the super wide, which I don't think you and I really talk much about, Jay, because you don't have that massive wide foot, but we have that now. And that super wide boot, um, it, it's a real necessary tool probably one of the most important it's for tool. those really 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 biased. but, but all, so so the first so the first boot that we came out with was the elite um it's a very technical boot and that elite boot is utilized more for alpine use higher country um rock scree fields things like that 
a little higher rate of breathability. Then you have the Mountain Hunter, which is an all leather boot. It shares the same midsole, outsole construction. It does share the same full length, coated, uh, tapered nylon shank. Uh, it is an uninsulated un package. I, I would classify that as a four season boot, right? And then we offer that same boot in what we call a wide fit. So you have a Mountain Hunter wide fit it would go up with two e like a two e width then we have our encompass our encompass came in and that's a boot for somebody's doing that is doing some i would say lighter less rigorous hunts that don't require suspension or total or a um, torsional stability because they're not carrying a super heavy pack and but they'll still get the same ride with that boot that you would get if you were in the mountain hunter and elite because the rocker cans the same and that's that midsole that polyurethane midsole uh it doesn't have the big heavy toe cap all or i'm sorry the big heavy ran all the way around the boot it's a thinner uh, more polyurethane style, more though. trekking the backpacking mm -hmm. style uh, I used it a lot for whitetail hunting this year, and I, and I and we're getting more and more guys that hunt you know, a lot of the mountainous eastern mountains for whitetail. Very popular. And I use and, that a lot in Mexico on the mule deer and the coos deer hunts. Yeah. I use the Encompass a lot and really, really liked it. Um, so, and then you have so the the Encompass, and then you have the super wide, which super wide. Yeah, and, and how much of a demand do you see for hunters that have wide feet? It, obviously, you do because you came out with it. It's massive. That boot, for a guy that is struggling with width in the front of his foot, that boot is it. We have spent years trying to fit, and we've done it successfully. But we've always dealt with some guys that are just that freak, right? Like it is Fred Flintstone, like so wide that you really have to do some crazy stuff like rock climbing modifications, like slitting the rand, grinding the rand off to accommodate the front of the foot. And we have this boot now. And a guy said it to me once, and he's spot on with this. Why in the world can I go buy the most advanced technical climbing hunting camo from Kuyu? Why can I go do that? And I have to go to Bass Pro or the farm store to get a pair of boots to fit my foot on a hunt and take two or three pair of them with me because I can't get two pair to last an entire 10-day hunt in the mountains. Now, this guy's going on sheep hunts, okay? Right that James and I just finished a boot that you'll be able to do that now. So you think about this. You can go buy your custom long-range rifle, your best clothing, but you can't get a boot on your foot. Well, now you can. Now they can. And yeah. this boot accommodate the widest foot. It, it's, it's a tool for us that we can use to make a difference for those those really big guys, and that, they are. It's like you've got the uh, with the big and tall store. Yeah, this is this, a this is the type of boot that works for some of those guys. But it, but it, but but this is the this is the thing. I don't care what anyone says. When you invest in really cool gear, you want it to look good, and this boot looks good. It looks modern, and it's stable. It's just as stable as any of the other range of our boots. It's going to be a home run for a lot of these guys. They can finally fit in. It's kind of funny, but they can finally be the whole package they wanted to be, right? And get the performance they're looking for. And performance, right. yeah. Right. All right. One of the things that I think is so cool about you guys is how each one of you feel the calls and each one of you work with the customers to find, this isn't just a, you're selling boots. You're creating relationships with customers 
and you're helping them individually. Talk about how that is an integral part of the mission of the company that you guys spend specific time with these customers um, you know, from the mapping kits to the, you know, the custom boot system to the orthotics to going through the whole process. How important is that for, you know, say every one of your customers? Well, it's extremely important. It's ex it's extremely important for them, but it is also for us because what we're trying to do, we're not just trying to sell a boot. We're trying to solve a problem. And if you don't have the time to sit and visit with that person, you have to be able to listen to their needs. You have to listen to what they have been doing in the past. Questions and answering period is vital in making sure, even if you're just doing a retail boot, it's vital that you're getting the correct size. Why is that important to get the correct size for us? It's because, you know what, Jay, I actually go in the back and box these things up and ship them out too. And the reality is, is if I don't spend that little bit of time to gather a little bit more information from them to ensure that I'm doing the right thing for them, why then I might get to touch and handle it again. So it, we are problem solvers. That's why we like to talk to each and every one of them if possible. I get emails all the time. I go through our initial e email box every day and you get these guys that answer, ask questions and sometimes they don't go ahead and put their phone number down there. And they're actually asking pretty technical questions. They're, they're saying, will this boot work for this particular bunion that I have. Uh, I've got hammer toes. What's the process of doing that? Well, for me to sit there and type all this stuff out, there's too many <laughs> questions that I need answered before I can do it. So I love going ahead and saying, give me your phone number so I can call you and we can sit and visit about this. It's just, you can really gauge a lot from a conversation and hearing somebody's voice too. You really can. And there's not enough of that going around. Well, everybody talks about that too. I mean, I have guys tell me on a regular basis, it's really cool to be able to actually talk to you. Oh, it's it's pretty, pretty impressive it's very, that you actually answered the phone. It's a pro, it's a I heard you on a podcast. Yeah. You know, and it, it, I don't know, it's a, it's a personal uh, relationship with each and every person. And it does, it does, it works great. Guys, tell me about the custom boot system process from start to finish. Jay, the, the way that this really works for people is they purchase that map, which you went through that with us. And that mapping kit provides us with a representation of the peak pressure on the bottom of your foot with that mapping kit and those photos, James and I are able to put our 25, 28 years of experience. 30 plus. 30 plus to, to look and identify the type of foot we're dealing with. Now, one thing that I would say about this mapping kit, and I won't labor this, but that is taking a full weight bearing impression, not a foam box impression that is kind of Mis can really be misinterpreted. So having that full weight bearing uh, carbon impression in those photos, we've identified that foot type, we've put it on an intake form, we've measured it, we've put our formula to work, and now we're ready to start a consultation. And you know, we went through yours, it was about an hour, sometimes they're a little quicker, depending on the severity of the problem that the client is experiencing. But we cover things like, all right, you wanted to go through the process. What kind of problems have you been dealing with? Let's talk about this rel relative to your feet. Now we talk about the boots. Then we talk about the terrain. We uncover things. It's a question, question and answer, question and answer. And our hope is that our findings, our preliminary findings prior to the consultation overlap because if they do, 
we have a direct course of action. At the end of that consultation, we have, will have determined what is the appropriate foundation for that person's foot or the environment that they want to utilize the boot in. That boot is then modified, warming and molding it. Think of a downhill ski boot. We also talk about the or custom orthotics, how we're going to pour that orthotic, how we're going to grind and fit that orthotic to that boot for that foot type. Everything is then done. It's passed off to our team in the processing room. And I would say in a normal situation, if there aren't back orders, of course, everyone's dealing with some back orders now, three to four weeks, that can be in their hand completed. But the service doesn't end at that point because now that person goes through a post-consultation before they ever take the boots outside. And that consultation, post-consultation is with James or myself, the person that started the process with you. And we confirm that the chart is right and that your fit is right and you're set up for success. And should anything happen during that wear-in process of the boots, when you put a pack on and start wearing it, we would document it and we would make those, those adjustments. And the cool thing is once the chart's set up, that, that client can come back and buy new orthotics at a discounted rate. They can get a new boot set up. So it's a, it's a great service. I mean, invest in your feet. My goodness, these hunts are not inexpensive today. So taking care of your feet's key. Well, and don't you think um, the older, and one thing I've noticed, the older I get, the more it becomes important. In other words, when I was 20, you know how when you're when you're young, your feet, your body, you can take all sorts of abuse and you literally could wear the wrong size boot on a hunt and it doesn't matter as much. But as you get older, I know for me, as I get older, your feet, it, it becomes more of an issue. And so, you know, I think a lot of it could be guys that are young, if they take care of their feet early on, and if they wear proper boots, they're not going to have some of the issues. Whereas, you know, I would say I'd, I probably didn't pay as much attention and, and put as much emphasis and importance on having a good quality boot and a good quality fit that it caused some issues um, with my own body that now, you know, be 50 next week, uh, you know, that all of a sudden now it becomes very important and very apparent that this, this is, this is way more important than maybe I thought it was when I was, you know, 18. That's a hundred percent. Oh, it, it, it is absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's it is constantly changing. It's it's pre it's preventative, right? It's uh, being proactive, and you know, I I do know what you mean. You know, twenty years old, you would come off a hunt like that, your feet could be blistered up, and you laughed at everybody and thought it was funny, right? And the right. next day, your boots on, you were you were trucking, and 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 the big thing to know now is when you get into the right type of boot and the right type of orthotic system, it's protective. It's protecting you from strain and fatigue. It's offloading the foot. So your recovery time is better. And who doesn't need a shorter recovery time as they get older? Because that's exactly what you're saying. It's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about these um, Synergy Orthotics and how they're different than other insoles and why you guys have had so much success with them. You take that, James. Well, let me talk about the process here first and it'll kind of all flow together. So when we make a Synergy Orthotic, just like a custom boot system, we require a, a mapping kit to be purchased. And again, like Steven suggested, this is really creating a mirror image of the plantar surface of the foot. Shows the peak pressure. That and some photos of the foot allow somebody that really understands the foot and ankle that you can evaluate that uh, foot for potential problems. Once we have a chart put together for that customer, and we've done our preliminary evaluation of it, then we get on the phone, do another consultation. It's not quite as long, but we go through there and really discuss, you know, what we're seeing, 
how we're going to make this. So the Synergy Orthotic is actually made out of a, a medical grade type of polymer that we've used in our clinic for many, many moons to help those patients that had, let's say, diabetes that had developed ulcers on their foot that were reoccurring. It's a deep blister. And in, in those situations, of course, the doctor would see the patient. There would be offloaded padding after debridement done. You get the foot well, and then you make it a, a device for them. The beauty about this product is, you know, we're all a little different. Our foot's a little different. Our body weight's a little different. Pack weight's even different. So we're able to take this formula and adjust the durometer. That's the density of that to help protect the sheer force that creates those problems. So because you can take that and fit that into a boot that was sized for them, it's a no brainer. There isn't materials on the market that are used to make orthotics in, in, the, in the form of top cover materials that has the ability to act like the natural fat pad on the foot like this does. It's really kind of a fat pad replacement type of material. Um, it goes in shoes. It can go in boots. You don't run into a, the risk factor of you know, taking a rigid device, sitting it into a shoe, uh, it's not fitting properly. Uh, that can cause problems with the foot. Those rigid devices can actually create tears in the waterproof membrane because it's not sitting properly down in there. And really, to be honest with you, those rigid devices, when you put them into a, a, a rigid boot, you're compounding that rigidity in that shell. That device is actually designed to have a bit of motion built into it. That's why you select the specific types of shell materials. But when you do that, it instantly can overcorrect the foot and cause potential problems. And we have people call all the time about that. They get, they'll get a, a common occurrence when you do that. Is you'll get you'll you'll have people <laughs> complain that they're getting excessive pressure pushing up into the arch of it, and it's because whoever ground that that style of an orthotic just did not have the boots there in front of them to grind and fit it to the to that and to the shank of the of the boot and one other thing to think about with that that type of device compared to a custom synergy orthotic which is a polymer more of a dynamic insert the in a climbing situation, like we'll say a 30 degree climb, Jay, you, you and I have talked, you exercise daily behind, you've got a big loop that you do behind your house there. 30 degree climb, you know, at what point do you stop putting the foot flat and go to the ball and the toe? And this is what I've always struggled with. I hear everyone wanting to put like, like an arch support because everyone talks about it. But my God, when you're only side healing on a third of the foot so you're only bearing weight on a third of it how's that even doing anything and when you're climbing if the toe of your boot is going into the mountain and the ball of the foot is in the mountain but the arch and the heel are elevated and there's no weight on it how is that really doing anything for you that is the biomechanics behind what james and i are bringing to the table here and trying to educate people on it's it's Clin clinical, I'm going to say it, prescriptions that have been used way before we were ever there. And we took bits and pieces that of this that work and we've tied it into this because it's fit, very fitting to this whole sport. What I hear you saying is something that happens with a lot of different things in medicine and such where you have let's just say a little bit of misinformation creates almost a misapplication, but it almost becomes uh, set in stone, if you will, and people just automatically think that that's what you need, and it all stems from misinformation, in your opinion. You know what? It's, it's funny. I told a guy this yesterday. You know, you hear people on other forums talk about you got to stop pronation 
you supinate. Well, gosh, guys, we, in a normal gait cycle, you pronate and you supinate. But the reality is that a lot of these guys think they make it sound like it's the most evil thing to do. But in reality, if you don't do some of those motions, you're not walking properly. So it, it, to your point, yeah, there's there's a lot of misinformation. There, out there. there is, and it, and it has to be application-based, right? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say to you, after 20-some years of making orthotics, you know, having a company doing that, that they don't work because in the right application, staying on your feet in the sure factory on concrete, it's money. That's what's going to keep someone from tearing their foot up. Well, a lot of those people, are they're not wearing a quality shoe to begin they're with. Not you wearing a factory, a quality, they're not wearing a You have a factory saying, here's $100, go buy yourself a pair of steel tires. I'm just <laughs> saying that, that, sure. that the, it's application-based, but, but do, you, do you kind of get my point? If you're climbing on the toe of the shoe, explain to me. Sure. From the ball, the foot to the heel, if you're not burying any weight on top of it, how is that doing anything for you? And this is supposed to be a product that is supposed to be benefiting a mountain hunter, a sheep hunter. Right. And you're and it's made off of a cast and well, it's how made about off of this. I mean, how, about, how about this? A micro cell puff material that looks explain what looks that digital. Is. Looks explain. digital. Hang on, just let me finish. <laughs> it's digital. When you look at that, well, that's e micro cell puff. Is that EVA? That's kind of a Chinese foam. So is what it is. the bottom line, well, my point is this: people talk about, oh, it customizes to your foot. Well, guess what? If you wear it for a week and you pull it out and you look at the toes, the indentations in there because your body's pressed into it. It's lost all protection. Right. There's nothing. It's completely bottomed out. It just doesn't. Work. No. And in, in, in the heat of your body, it, it's the heat and the warmth. We do some stuff in the power of sports industry. I explained that to you, Jay. And we actually had a rider come off the track after doing like a 20 minute ride. And they were over in Indy. And he had 20 minutes in it, he took his boot off. Pulled that foot, but in the heat and the pressure, he's already compressed the fact brand new pair of boots. It's just how fast it breaks down. So that brings me to another question, or I guess another statement, if you will. You mm -hmm. guys, you guys fit a lot of mountain hunting boots for people, but you also do a ton of work boots, everyday shoes, uh, yes. logging biking snowmobiling like this is not just a hunting application um talk about the the importance of you know helping with the custom synergy footbed in everyday shoes so james and i in that 25 or 30 year i don't 30 plus, 30 plus years when you get to be our age you can just say yeah. a long long time <laughs> You do. But so during that time, we were constantly finding solutions for people footwear wise because we, we understood that a customer thought it for an individual wasn't placed in the right footwear, it wasn't going to work. So, what we ended up doing when we developed this fitting is we brought brands on board that we felt their build quality were up to snuff and we could put our name behind it. We call them certified brands. So yes, if a person goes through a custom boot fitting process or just walks in off the street, we're able to identify for a work boot what would be the right work boot for them in conjunction with their custom synergy or thigh. What would be the right training shoe application to complement their hunting boot system. So the concept's basically this. Jay, we're putting you in a custom boot system and you're gonna spend 950 to $1,200 for this thing or 1500 with orthotics, okay? And you're gonna wear that for 30 days out of the year and you may train in it a little bit. And the real question I've got to you during the consultation is, so what are you wearing for your cardio shoes and your training shoes? Because quite honestly, 
I consider you a professional and why are we not treating you the way we do treat other professional athletes? And you already know we treat a lot of or help a lot of professional athletes with their foot gear and orthotics. Um, so why wouldn't we put a training shoe with a custom synergy orthotic that is very similar to what we're using in your hunting boots. So when you put that training shoe on, your body starts to identify how it's going to function, how it's going to perform. So there isn't like this plug it in and plug it out, like going from the training shoe to the hunting boot, hunting boot, training shoe. You want a seamless transition. That really is the best. Well, let me add something to that too. So we find out. A lot of times people will go through this because they do feel like they have special needs. They may be developing heel pain. They may have uh, severe bunion deformities, things of that nature. How about a, a neuroma in the foot, which is a pinched nerve, usually within the third inner space of the foot. The reality is, is when we get into doing these things, that foot gear for hunting can do what it can do as long as what they're wearing the rest of throughout their lives throughout the year has the same ability to help protect them and that's us being able to go and look at our orthopedics shoes that we've used identify which works out the best for them for their foot type and help get them in there so they can be protected throughout the year makes total sense in other words have it be all of the time where your foot is being taken care of rather than just when yeah. you're out hunting or just when you're going to you know you're do, do your power sports or, or whatever you're doing when you're dealing with a neuroma condition if you it's, are, neuroma. it's a pinched nerve in the third interspace generally the foot it gets inflamed and it can it can burn, it can become numb, you can get electrical shock sensations out to your toe. Oftentimes people feel like they've got a sock walled up underneath their sulcus of their foot. But the reality is, is if you aren't wearing something to protect your foot during, the, during the rest of the year, then that boot isn't really going to be able to be as a it is unrealistic if you think you're going to take your fancy boot system and throw it on your foot and solve your problem because I've got news for you. I've had this conversation with guys and they and they kind of think that they're this is they a, a, a magic, wand. That magic wand over it and because they spent the money it ought to just be perfect and the reality is there's got to be some accountability and some self-care on their needs and sure. this is not just because you got a foot trouble either guys. This is just trying to be the best, most efficient hunter you can be. Sure. Right? Sure. Like when you get to the mountain, it's time to eat the mountain. Right. Not limp. Right. God, we love this stuff. <laughs> I was going to say it's awesome listening to you guys. Um, all right. I want to ask you guys, what is the best way for people to contact you? Um, what should they expect from that initial contact and how, how do you feel like you can, you know, best serve and help people? Well, the best way for someone to reach out, they listen to this podcast, they can call us. There's contact information. I can run the number 618-544-8782. Eight seven eight two, and there's a series of extensions. I think James and I each have one. So We're listed as James or, or Stephen, so they can go right. They can go right to us if they're patient with us. They will get a call back from one of us. One hundred and ten percent will happen. Uh, they can go to our website. There's a lot of great information on there. There's tabs at the top. I feel that the site's very easy to navigate. And um, they can always look at our social media. I, we've really upped it. We're doing a lot of informative um, series and reels and trying to educate people on the process and the product. And then our YouTube, it's, it's kind of new to us last year, but I think we've got almost 29 or 30 videos, really educational, that are longer. And, um, you know, as far as what can somebody expect, I would say this, you are going to be treated and your problem is you're going to be treated 
exactly the way James and myself would want to be treated if we were the ones struggling with the problem. And I really do believe you would be hard pressed to find anyone that will take the interest in your personal problem or your goals. Um, your upcoming hunts that you're trying to achieve, the Big Ten, your Grand Slam. We really enjoy being part of that. And we try our best. We really put 110% in it. And, you know, I ha have had guys try to make suggestions to us about stuff. And, and it's just, you know, a, a shortcut. There is no shortcut to professionally doing this for somebody. And I believe when someone's stepping up, to the level of of doing a lot of these hunts it's it's pro pro level stuff it's time to get real serious about it and listen to what that customer has to say so awesome guys well i really appreciate having you on and you guys sharing your story and i look forward to having you on again i know we're going to be doing some q a uh, stuff on instagram we're going to be doing some q a uh, foot stuff here on the podcast so I wanted to have you guys on and, and introduce you guys and, and let let uh, the J. Scott Outdoors podcast followers hear it directly from the horse's mouth. And I feel like we got a two for one today, which was fantastic. And uh, <laughs> just just thank, thank you for everything that you guys do. And um, I was excited to share, you know, I've had interactions with you guys and, and you know, it's one of those things to tell people how hands-on you are and how much you guys are genuine and how much you care. But I think anyone listening to both of you talk um, solidifies, you know, what kind of service you guys provide. So thanks for coming on. Uh, God bless you both. And uh, we'll be chatting at you down the road here, okay? Appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Jay.